This video will be focusing on human behaviour. Human behaviour is the only observable output that might indicate a person's inner values and attitudes. Behaviours are the collection of motor actions, verbal statements, facial expressions and body language that we each use to express ourselves and to undertake social and work related activities each day. Our behaviour and its underlying drivers develop over time as a product of our biological makeup, our varying cultural influences, our life experiences and the associated memories and learning. Behaviours are motivated and directed in the short and long term by many additional internal and external factors. These include such things as mood, interest, stimulation level, personally experienced and vicariously learnt consequences for actions, organisational cultural influences, relationships with colleagues, aspects of a specific task, the working environment and organisational structure. As a consequence, there is potential for a wide range of possible behaviours by an individual for any given situation. This has the advantage of fostering original action and use of initiative, which can improve problem solving and increase work capacity. But there can also be an increased potential for human error and associated losses. So it must be remembered that human behaviour determines how effective management systems will actually be. Now it is far more difficult to change a person's attitude than it is to change their behaviour. But changing somebody's behaviour can actually lead to positive changes in their underlying attitudes towards safety. And behaviours of all staff throughout a business must be considered when looking at this in the workplace. So it's important to remember that people do not simply do what they are told to do. They behave the way that they do because of the consequences that result for them from having behaved in that way. There are a number of psychological approaches or schools of thought that seek to describe human behaviour, its causes and how it can be studied. We're going to briefly look at four of these. The behavioural approach, social learning, the psychodynamic approach and the humanistic approach. Now the behavioural approach was developed initially by Pavlov and further developed by Skinner. And this approach considers that all behaviour is learned through classical or operant conditioning. And what that means is that the behaviour is reinforced by consequences. It also considers that an individual is born as a blank slate upon which the learning imprints. Social learning theory is a further development of this by Bandura in the 1960s. This emphasises the importance of indirect reinforcement in the learning process. So within this theory, the individual is said to make mental representations of events. This theory also considers the internal states of the individual, which will also drive their behavioural choice. The psychodynamic approach was developed by Freud, and this considers that behaviour is determined by unconscious thoughts, wishes and memories. We are only consciously aware of a very small proportion of our thoughts, wishes and memories at any one time. So certain techniques have to be employed to enable these unconscious thoughts to move into the conscious. Such techniques would include psychoanalysis. Humanistic approach was developed by Cohen in the 1950s 
and further developed by Carl Rogers and Maslow in the 60s. This approach considers that the behaviorists and psychodynamic approaches are merely deterministic. That is, that people are driven by forces beyond their control. So therefore they are not controlling their behavioral choices. So the humanistic approach states that individuals do in fact have free will and can choose, and they can choose which behavior they exhibit. So it actually attempts to unify the behaviorists and the psychodynamic approaches. Obviously, as can be seen by this, no one psychological approach or school of thought can fully describe or account for all behaviors. Human behavior and the underlying motivators and influencing factors are extremely complex, and they are unique to each individual, and they change over time and in differing situations. So let's look at an example. In this picture, we have two workers working in a hotel lobby area, and we can see that there is one guy working on a ladder on top of an upturned empty paint tub. He's working on electrics, the lighting in the concealed ceiling area, and we can assume for this purpose that the power may well still be live. Now obviously that is not a very secure or stable position to be standing in, so his colleague is assisting him by holding the tub whilst precariously balanced on two ladders himself. And the question I want you to consider is why? Why have they chosen these behaviours? Why have they chosen to do this job in this way? Now of course we can see the risks that they face. The guy on top of the upturned paint tub could be electrocuted, of course. He could fall. He could fall on his colleague. And of course they could drop things or fall on other people passing by. But they ignore these risks and they focus on the fact that by behaving in this way they get the job done. And this will be seen positively by their manager and of course they will get paid. So they truly believe that they have made the right choices of behaviour. So why? Why do they believe that that's the right choice? Let's consider some of the reasons that might sit behind this choice. They could, of course, rushed to the work site, not planned or organised themselves carefully enough, and brought the wrong ladder, so it's not tall enough. It could be that their company does not possess any taller ladders. It could be that they've never asked for a taller ladder. It could, of course, be that procurement aren't therefore aware that taller ladders are needed and it's always been done this way, so this is what's normal to them. On the other hand, it could be that they have asked procurement and they have asked their manager for taller ladders and they have been told, you've got two ladders and that's enough. Procurement are making cost-cutting savings and no more ladders can be ordered. It could also be that their line manager or supervisor has condoned the behaviour and not commented in any way when they've visited site. We're going to consider human performance now. In the workplace, we often refer to performance levels rather than behaviour. So what do we mean by this in relationship to human behaviour? Human performance is a way of measuring or defining the output of a person's behavioural choices in relation to a set of standards or workplace requirements. It must be remembered that human performance is impacted by many individual and workplace or situational factors, just as discussed in the previous slides. On this slide we've got two quotes to explain the meaning of human performance. So human performance can be the accomplishment of a task in accordance with an agreed standard of accuracy 
completeness and efficiency. Or it could be described as human capabilities and limitations that have an impact on the safety and efficiency of operations. This slide looks at different types of human performance in the workplace and it shows that it can be divided into three levels skill-based, rule-based or knowledge-based. When an individual is undertaking skill-based human performance outputs, they are carrying out routine, highly practiced tasks in a largely automatic fashion with occasional conscious checks on their progress. This type of human performance is what people are very good at most of the time. And this is the preference that most people choose by way of human performance most of the time. Rule-based human performance is when the person notices a need to modify their largely pre-programmed behaviour because they have to take account of some change in the situation. The problem is one that the person has probably encountered before or has been trained to deal with or which is covered by procedures. So they apply memorised or written rules to solve that problem. Knowledge-based human performance, on the other hand, is an area of human performance that people are quite reluctant to use. They only use it when they have repeatedly failed to find other pre-existing solutions. It is slow and requires a lot of effort. The person has to use their understanding of the situation and the problem, which is usually very patchy. It's also conducted within the conscious mode of thought processing, which has a very limited capacity to hold information. It behaves rather like a leaky sieve, losing things as the person turns their attention from one aspect of the problem to another. If this area of human performance has to be undertaken within an emergency or other emotionally charged situation, the fear being experienced by the individual will reduce that person's ability to think logically and it will lead to knee-jerk or inaccurate actions. So, humans perform tasks within one of these performance levels and the level that they choose will be dependent on whether the situation presents routine, trained for or novel problems and whether they actually have to utilise automatic or conscious thought processes. And the box at the bottom describes where these levels of human performance sits, both within our thought process and within the situation. So as you can see, skill-based performance sits in the top right-hand corner of the box and is an automatic thought process performance level used for routine situations and as you look across to the left of the box you can see that it lines up with a routine type situation. Knowledge based performance requires conscious thought processing and sits in the bottom left hand corner of the box as you can see and this is used solely for novel problems and humans will try not to use knowledge base human performance as it is hard for them to do. Rule based human performance is a mix of conscious and automatic thought processing and is used for regularly trained for problems. More details are available in our Competency Management, Culture and Behaviour module. Thank you for listening.